so from time to time, a tweet I will have made will, uh, if it's really, I guess, not viral, I've never had a viral video, but, you know, over a thousand, two thousand, three thousand uh, likes or comments. Um, sometimes those video or those 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 tweets come back like years later. I remember, you know, the one I did about the superhero guys with their girls going to the prom that comes back like every eighteen months or it's like herpes. Um, and then there's like there's a few other ones. Well, this one came back today. This is a tweet that I did a couple of years ago. This was from I'll show it to you. This is from. Uh, 2019 okay so almost well whatever three years ago to the date almost um and i was talking about you know there was a lot of announcements the epic game store stadia so i was talking about gamers thoughts on it and i said gamers confuse the fuck out of me they hate the epic store they hate stadia they hate virtual reality they basically hate change gamers who are supposed to be tech savvy and forward thinking it seems they preferred if they were still sitting in their pjs playing snes and eating tricks right and i'm like whatever fine so i i tweeted this let me see how many uh this got about four four thousand just got a like right there uh four thousand likes okay and it kind of tapered off eventually and i thought it was done well today this comes back at me and my twitter feed is filled with people commenting on this and i don't know how that works i don't know why it works that way maybe someone influential is going through your feed and they retweet something and that starts it again i have no fucking clue but I wanted to address it because a lot of things haven't changed. This is the one that really stood out to me, uh, but it's it's similar to a number of comments I've been getting. This is a guy named Silent Bun Gaming. Here's his tweet. No day one patches, no on-disc DLC, no unfinished games, no microtransactions, no season passes, no loot box, no pay to win, no DRM, no online, always. No digital store closures. What's the problem exactly? And I was curious, did he send this today? Or is this maybe coming up through the filter. No, no, this is a tweet from today. Okay. So this, and a number of the tweets I've gotten, I'll show you another one in a minute, are, are all from today. And they're all responding to this pretty much like it's three years ago. So I'd like to take them one by one. Uh, because again, I just, I just, I think people like this, I don't understand them. No day one patches. Okay, well, let's be clear. Elden Ring had a day one patch. It's many people's game of the year. Uh, the Last of Us, I was just going through big games that had day one patches. The Last of Us Part 2 had a day one patch. Uh, Pokemon day one patch, which is a huge fucking hit. Um, day one patches allow the games to be... It's, it's almost like gamers don't want to give anything. It's like you want the very best, you want it bug free, you want it on time. And when the developer finally gets a little bit of breathing room by going, hey, we can push maybe six weeks of development out of the schedule onto the day one pass so we can actually ship on time. This guy doesn't want day one patches. No on-disc DLC. Well, that's becoming very quickly a thing of the past, okay? It's still, it, this that always bothered me. It always bothered me that the player felt that if it was on the disc, he owned it and he was it was due to him. I don't want to get into a big debate about that. I mean, ultimately... What you pay for is what you get. If you're not happy with what you get, then I've always said, yes, you should be furious and get your money back. Um, but if what you pay for is what you get and you're very happy and you then learn there might be three extra characters that the team and the produ uh, the publisher saves money by putting it on the disc um, and just sending out a quick unlock when, when, when the time is right or the, the scenario is right, and that makes the developer's life easier, you have a problem with that, nothing's changed there. I'm like, I just think you're, it, it, like I've said before, it's like walking into McDonald's, buying a French fry, pa uh, order French fries. You get, let's just say like 40 fries and a large fry. I don't know what it is. And then you're like, but there's other fries back there. I can see them. It's like, yes, but they're not for you. How we divvy up the product is irrelevant. What matters is, are you happy with what you paid for? And if you're not, then you have a real problem that I support you as a consumer. Uh, no unfinished games. Well, I mean, again, I don't disagree with you, pal, Silent Bun. Um, but all you have to do is kind of take a look at um, even us, this is this year, Warzone. Warzone was filled with bugs. People didn't care. Cyberpunk, you know, the story of it was 13.7 million copies in the first three weeks. Now, if it was pre-ordered, certainly that was a big chunk of it. If it was the first three or four days, sure. 
But after this made major news, not just in the video game world, if you still went out and bought this game with all the bugs, you're part of the problem. Same thing with Battlefield. The good news is Battlefield, uh, EA has come out and said, the sales were disappointing, we're rethinking this, we've learned a lot of things, blah, blah, blah. So we'll find out on their next big release how much of that is lip service, but it seems that that may be going away. But you're noticing maybe... I don't know if you're noticing a pattern yet because we just started, but maybe what you will start to see is a pattern of when the gamer stops giving companies their money for doing X, game companies stop doing X. No micro no microtransactions, no season passes, no loot boxes. Well, let's just do season passes and microtransactions. Um, that's totally counter. Check this out. You might know this, Silent Bun. Um, take two. Uh, this is 2020 uh, record 3.37 billion in revenue recurrent consumer spending which is basically uh, service-based spending when you're buying packs and dlc and mtx and all that uh, that was up 48 percent year over year 64 percent of the company's entire profit this year uh, was from microtransactions they're not alone activision the dark blue is uh, uh in-game subs subscriptions and other revenues look at the difference look at the goddamn difference that is staggering uh what are what are we at they said uh uh it's somewhere in here but that 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 is a huge fucking amount uh where this is just basically the, the light blue is just the sale of the product okay ea ea earned three point almost four billion dollars in 12 months in 2021 off microtransactions so again yeah sorry pal i don't have to tell you no loot boxes. I mean, again, gamers have expressed their concern. Those do seem to be going away, and I think that's good. Uh, I don't have a problem with loot boxes, but certainly pay-to-win loot boxes, which I don't think we see a lot of anymore, and certainly not in, a, uh, in America. I know certain cultures and countries are okay with it, but America's never been okay with it, and, and I'm glad for that. Um, no DRM. Nobody cares. I mean, you might care. A handful of people might care, but let me give you an example. Um, good old games, which is uh, a digit. It's Steam, basically. They have fewer games, um, but they have no DRM. Okay, and then Steam, of course, as you know, has uh, uh, digital rights management. Okay, check it out. So Steam, uh, the, and these are the the we we don't have a lot of uh, data for Steam, but Steam has made, uh, or, or good, old, good Old Games made 8.5% of the market. Steam makes 60% of the digital computer market. So as much as you, Silent Bun, don't want DRM, and I appreciate that, and no always online, nobody cares. Nobody cares. If they did, they would, would, wouldn't spend the money, or, or, and they'd go over to Good Old Games, and that would become the norm, but it's not. Um, all these things about store closes, no more store, digital store closing. Why? How many people were buying PSP games? How many people were buying 3DS games anymore digitally? Or, yeah, I mean, it's just a ridiculous thing to complain about. I'm sorry. And it's, oh, you know, we cons conservation. Conservation for who? You think Sony, you know, took the PSP store, uh, offline and then went to the hard drives and the servers and deleted all the copies of, uh, uh, Motor Storm, Arctic, whatever the fuck it was called. I mean, they still exist. The games haven't died. They haven't been erased. They haven't run a magnet over the goddamn hard drive. They've just taken the store down because it was costing more uh, to keep the store up than it was not to. So if, if you want to keep buying games on the Vita or the PSP, but if not, I don't know what you're complaining about. This guy writes me, tweets me. He says he, he's complaining about the same tweet. We don't owe our data to every company beholden to China just because they're new. Yeah, I'm aware, pal. Anybody who watches my channel and my shit knows I can, I could, you know, if I had the chance to put on like a ninja suit and successfully go over there and take out some of the horrible people that are running that country, I would do it if I had the chance. But I don't have the chance, so don't worry about it. Um, I'm with you. No one's saying you owe them it. But ultimately, you know, that's that's you taking a stand against a political aspect. That's fine, but to, but that's that, that's not what people were saying. What I was talking about when they were complaining about the Epic Game Store was, 
oh, it's just, it's another game store I have to have on my thing. Like, so? You used to have to get your fucking fat ass out of the goddamn house, drive to the goddamn mall, walk to a couple to Babbage's and Electronics Boutique and fucking Target to find your games. Now it's like, oh, I got to open another window. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, the China thing, of course. China thing, of course. This guy says, we don't owe any company to just embrace rental culture. No, you don't. But most people are. Most people don't care. So you can stick with this. He says, these are not only cheaper, they're complete. Some things are just far better when they're old school. That's fine. Play your Shadowrun um, fucking uh, paper and pen RPGs. That's great. Play your D&D. That's great. Um, but most people, and that's, that's why I'm saying, it's like, you know, it's almost like a lot of these gamers are like living in this weird time capsule. It's like most people, when this guy says, what's the problem exactly? Nothing. All these things have been taken care of by the free market. And most of these things, the free market says, yeah, we're cool. Just keep giving us good shit to play and make it easy enough to acquire more good. So I just wanted to make a video to kind of cover this because I'm getting hit by this like 50, I don't know, 50 or 60 uh, responses to this fucking three-year-old tweet today. I do not understand it. Those are my responses. I'm sure you don't agree with all of them, but we don't have to agree to be pals. We just have to like Taylor Swift's music. It's good to see you. Be well, be safe. Uh, happy weekend. Bye.